Welcome to Geocache Adventures with me, Shadow Dragon One, where I explore the world of geocaching. If you like the podcast, please consider leaving a five star review on Apple Podcast or the Geocache Adventures Facebook page, or share it with somebody that you think would enjoy it. Word of mouth is a great way to spread the podcast. You can also join Geocache Adventures on Buy Me a Coffee. Just follow Geo Adventures, that's one word, G E O Adventures on Buy Me a Coffee and get behind the scenes on every episode or become a member to unlock other exclusive content. Hi everybody, Amy Shadow Dragon 1 here and with me is returning guest Lee Katz aka Var of Harkin. You may remember him from season 2, the Peoria Illinois Hidden History series, season 2 Caching with Team Cats where we recapped our Hannibal trip and season two giga events he's also made appearances in season one winter caching and season three mostly live at mocha welcome back hello thank you for having me back so we're going to delve today into liars caches yeah and this is an interesting one because if you try to research it it's hard to find information out there yeah, I even reached out to a couple of vloggers and said, have you done a video on this? Because I can't find anything. And they said, no, actually, we haven't. Guess what's coming, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> my, yeah. my local my local vlogger, I, I posted this to him when I started doing the research and I never got anything back from him. So I don't know if he's going into retirement early or he's mm. considering it or he's just too damn busy. Sorry, too darn busy. I'll censor myself. <laughs> well, let's start out with the very basics. What is a liar's cache? Traditionally, a liar's cache, no, as I said, traditionally, a uh-huh. uh, liar's cache it was a cache posting by a cache owner where they lied about what it would take to get to it, the extremities you would have to go to, the DT rating anything like that and and there's plenty of examples online with uh dating back as far as 2011 as far as i could tell um where it kind of started or or at least kind of made its big uproar and the big thing was was that uh it it exaggerated what it would take to get to this cash or what was involved with this cash kind of making the making the argument for why you're going to find a 5-5 cache. Oh, well, you know, as as experienced geocachers, you know, 5-5 is very difficult in, in D and T rating. So, you know, basically you're either going to need a snorkel, you know, scuba gear, an airplane, something to that effect. Climbing gear. Both. Exactly. Extreme climbing gear, zip yeah. lines, that type of garbage. So people would would go to these caches expecting a grand adventure and when they get there it may be nothing more than a light post cache or a film container in a bush you know something really trivial stupid and people got a little bent out of shape over that because you know there there are some hardcore geocachers out there that oh my god i i you know I just used PTO for three days so I could trek out here on a pilgrimage <laughs> with my three other buddies to find a film canister in a bush, really, for a 5-5? Five, five? Are you kidding me? So they got bent out of shape. So it is eventually, in the most part, as far as I know, it's evolved into, okay, proper etiquette says that a liar's cash should be evident on the page as in the page says this is a liar's cache just you know you like like the mystery caches would say these are not the posted coordinates uh of the cache the liar's cache should say something along the lines of this is a liar's cache it might even be included in the name that it's a liar's cache depending on the cache owner that placed it right right exactly so People have now gotten to the point where if you post that in the description, this is a liar's cache, then what's expected of you now is that you have to use your imagination. One of those, you know, 
very you know seldom used tottes <laughs> your imagination and come up and spindle a, a tale that will just boggle the mind but it's mainly entertainment value right and you'll 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 see that with the spotlighted cash today that uh i i threw at you but yeah it's it's gone from people really getting bent because they've devoted a lot of time and effort to this supposed five five because the pet cash owner stated that it was an extreme you know grand adventure to now it's the other way around cash owners are going to say hey you got to go find this but in, in finding it you got to make up a really good tale and by doing so i'll give you this unforeseen uh let me not unforeseen seldom seen combination of dt ratings okay like a five one or a one five you know you don't see those those help people in their you know fizzy grids or dt challenge which we'll talk about that, that a little later a whole nother can of worms <laughs> yes we will <laughs> So what type of geocache are they? I have seen ones that are traditional caches. The one that you highlighted is actually a mystery cache. Can these be any cache type? They can be any cache type. In doing my research, I found currently, you know, just as a point of reference, currently Project GC has 81 listed as having the liar in the name. So it's expected that those are all liars caches and they don't even stop at the United States borders. There's some in Norway and Finland. So there's 81 of them by GC, you know, so it's, it can go to traditional. And like you said, there's some in mystery. I have seen one or two as a multi and it's just, it can pretty much take any form except a virtual, obviously, because, you know, what can you do with a virtual? Yeah. I would say probably not an earth cache because of the strict exactly. requirements for placing those. Exactly. They, have, they require the educational one, but you know what? Now that I'm thinking of it, I'm wondering if there's a way to spin a liar's cache aspect of an adventure lab. Uh, I'm going to have well, to think on that one. I've got I mean, Adventure Advent Lab credit. <laughs> well, let's see. Here's the thing. The Adventure Lab, I mean, yes. To answer your question, it has been done because I oh, have it? a local cashier around here that is, well, you're basically making an adventure out of a out of a lab cache or a you know lab adventure. So you can make it fanciful as you want. This this one uh cashier made a, a who done it. Uh saga i guess you could call it yeah i guess if you so, have make it any kind of story then it's kind of a liar's cash in a way right I actually but made see, a couple that, of those <laughs> but, but see that's not that's not really not quite the same yeah and it's and it's not endorsed i guess you could call it endorsed by gchq yeah meaning i mean you don't have to go through a reviewer to create uh of you know the lab caches as as it was now yeah i kind of you, know, you think just basically it, put it out and there it is yeah i kind of think of those storyline adventure labs is kind of like a twist off of where i goes exactly yeah and 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 what what my personal my lab my my liars cache rather uh did was i used to have a a uh, geocache at my previous residence called Creepy Crawly. And those local listeners and, and some not so local listeners will know what I'm talking about. Creepy Crawly had his own name to fame and all that stuff. Then when I moved over to this current residence, I dropped Creepy Crawly and made son of Creepy Crawly. Okay. So there's 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 a bit of a storyline involved between here and there. I mean, it went through some phases, but there's a storyline started. So now the son of Creepy Crawly, which is my newest 
liar's cash that I played with, that basically says, like you said, it's a which way book. I want the, the I want the finder to give me a story of how the son of creepy crawly ends. Okay. So, I mean, he gets found, obviously, but what do you have to go through to get to him? You know, and I've had everything from, you know, fighting a blockade of M32 tanks to <laughs> fighting warlocks and wizards. And it's just fanciful reading and it's really enjoyable. It's whatever the imagination can create. Exactly. That's awesome. So when we're looking at the DT combos, a lot of them have get listed as five, five, obviously you can list them as anything. Right. But we don't actually know what the actual DT rating is till you get there. Precisely. Unless somebody, unless the CEO has determined or, or described in his, you know, write up, Hey, this is an actuality of such and such, but let's make it more than that in your in your logs you know something along those lines i have seen logs like that where the guy says you're actually going for a one one or you're actually going for a 1.5 1.5 they're usually pretty darn easy there's probably some examples that are otherwise but for the most part they're usually oh look i just dropped a cash there it is <laughs> you know it's that easy sometimes yeah from what i have heard and seen they're typically like you said an lpc or guardrail something very simple mm -hmm. very very beginner level even what we would consider a beginner level cash or a good right. one for beginners right but yeah that dt combo and then it that DKT combo being what it is, it gets into a whole cans of worms when we start talking about challenges. Yes, it does. With the fizzy grid and even challenge caches. Yes, it does. And, and quite honestly, maybe it's my naivety, but I don't understand where the big deal is. I mean, if it's, if it's locked in, as a five five or a four five or whatever the CEO decides, if it's locked into that, and that fills that little quadrant of your fizzy grid or your challenge grid or whatever it is, so what? <laughs> I mean, this this is me talking. This is why I created my liar's cash, and probably the whole reason why a lot of people do the liar's caches is to give those people that are not athletically inclined a chance to get that fizzy grid accomplished. Yeah. You know, th throw that through your mind for a little bit. It's not so much cheating. It's a matter of giving the person the access to get that. That's a good way to look at it because it's, it's technically not cheating because it's allowed by ground speak. Yep. Now there are those as you may call them hardcore cashers or purist cashers that are going to say, you can't do that. Yep. It's not allowed. And who would know the difference? And who would know the difference other than yourself? So I really feel like it's a personal thing. It, if, it goes... if you have an issue with it personally, that's your deal for your standards for yourself. And it ranks right up there with that geocacher that gets to a geocache that's an LPC and it tells them in the description, this is an LPC. But when they get there, it's not under the skirt. It's way up there. <laughs> okay. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah. So what they're going to do is they're going to log it saying found because you know, there are people out there that do saying found and in their log says, it was too high. I couldn't reach it. Hopefully they'll accept this as the log. And, you know, they send a picture to the CEO through the messages. So it's not actually on the cash page yeah. saying, here it is. I found it. I see it. I just can't reach it. Give me the credit. 
Now, of course, it comes to the CEO to say yes or no. So same idea. It gives you the access to get that 5-5 without actually having to worry about going underwater, finding that, you know, plane underwater that has it under the dashboard, you know, which there is one like that. Yeah, you bring up a really interesting point when you look at it that way, because there are people that are just not physically able to go do such types of caches. Exactly. Talk and if we don't handicap. have something like a liar's cash, then that completely excludes them from being able to participate in things like the fizzy grid challenge. Exactly. This gives them that leg up, as it were, to getting that mainstream awareness that they can they can do this. They just need a little bit of help. Well, that's where our liar's cash has come in. They're giving them that help. It's kind of like those caches that I have heard of out. I think there's some along the ET highway. And I know there's several out in the, the deserts of Nevada that have scuba diving and snorkeling and right. attributes listed on them just for the heck of it. And people go collect those ones so they can complete the attribute challenge without having to do that. Are you calling that a liar's cash? Is the CEO calling it a liar's cash? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't done those. <laughs> My point is, is it's all a matter of perspective. It is all a matter of perspective. You know, I can, I can click, I can click the the attribute good for kids. In fact, I have clicked it for good for kids because it's an easy cash. Yeah. Never mind the fact that it's on a busy highway on a guardrail, but it's good for kids because it's an easy cash. But I did get a log that says, this isn't so good for kids because I brought my grandkids out and this highway is way too busy. Then don't bring them. <laughs> don't let them out of the car. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. I mean, you can tell by, you can get an idea looking at the map, mm -hmm. the area and especially if you're geocaching with kids or something, you can't just rely on an attribute one way or the other. Exactly. You kind of got to look at the whole big picture, look at the map, look at the attributes, read the descriptions and the logs. Right. Like in, in your case, if you're in the desert and you come up to a snorkeling attribute or a scuba attribute, unless you're looking for sand sharks, you're probably not going to find or need it. You know? <laughs> Yeah, those sand sharks will get you, man, though, I tell Absolutely. you. Absolutely. <laughs> there are plenty of cashers that I have talked to that said they don't even pay attention to the attributes. They don't. I, I'm the one of them. I, what attributes? I don't typically, unless I'm trying to look for a specific type of thing. Okay. Like if I want to find a night cache, then I'll get on the website and search the attributes looking for night caches. But you're not necessarily looking at the attributes. You're just no. doing a search under them. I'm doing a search under them and looking to see if the caches have them. Right. Because I'm looking for something specific. I don't necessarily go to the attributes and look for it. But yes, it's, it's, Getting back on topic, the liars caches do tend to make the fizzy grids a little fuzzy. <laughs> you read it. But but again, I mean, with the exception of the CO of that particular cache and you, the, the person doing the fizzy grid, nobody's gonna know the difference because all they're gonna see is, in my case, son of creepy crawling. Now, if you went and you put liar liar pants on fire cash into that fizzy <laughs> grid yeah okay somebody could call the fizzy grid police on you and say foul ball can't play that one again it's all a game man don't get all stressed out about it it's all how you want to play it you know do you want to accept those those logs of oh i found it i i found it but i couldn't open it so here's a picture sent to the co Please allow my log that way. It's it's all how you want to play the game. And as a CEO, it's how I want, you know, 
how I want to enforce the game's rules. Yeah. You know? Yeah, this is one of those subjects that people can get really heated on, like the whole, I couldn't find it, I couldn't sign it, so I took a picture and sent it to somebody. And right there are those caches that cashers that will the COs that will delete those logs right. and say not acceptable. Or if you didn't have a pen, you yeah. Know. Oh, didn't have a pen, click, you know. What are you gonna do? You know, I I always try to sign it myself, but I don't delete somebody's logs on my cash because they didn't sign it. Right. Because you don't want to be that type. It doesn't matter that much to me. People are finding it, it and that's what matters to me. And I feel like with the with the liar's caches, I think as long as you know it's a liar's cache, I could see like when they originally started mm-hmm. and not knowing it was a liar's cache. Exactly. Being a bit upset about it. But I think as long as you know the whole point of it is to just be creative and make up a story, mm-hmm. then I don't see any issue with it. If you don't want to do that, then skip it. Right. And and I've had people find mine that just say TFTC and go on their merry way. Okay, that's fine. They They lost that opportunity to have a little fun. You know, that was a whole nother thing that I was thinking about with these. There are so many logs that you get that are just TFTC or I've, I've gotten logs that were just, just, just a period. Yes. I've, I've done gotten that a log too. that was, they must've just put a space in uh huh, because they something. were able to log it, but it counts yeah. as a character. I've gotten just a space. And I'm sure that happens on liars caches. And I can imagine the disappointment from the CO because that's not the point of the cache. And I and I've had I had one person uh log this, this liars cache as uh this person's partner stepped in a deep hole while looking for this cache, and now we're sitting in the emergency room. That was it. No found it, no nothing. I actually, for one time, I actually reached out to that person and I said, look, you need to change your your log because this is a liar's cache, I get it. But an inexperienced person going for this cache will see that log and they won't want to go for it. Yeah. He went ahead and edited his log. Albeit, he said, remember, this is a liar's cache. So it's like, okay, he edited it, but he didn't. (laughs) Now, I have seen sometimes where people have logged it on their phones real quick and logged, found it, will write note later. Update later, later. yeah. Or an update later, and then they either go back and update the original post or post it as a note log on there from their computer. And then I feel like it's okay because it can... If you're trying to type a lot on your phone and you're not one of these kids that can type under a desk without looking at it with your two thumbs better than you can at a keyboard. Right. I I get needing to sit down at a computer and type a real, if you're going to type a long story, doing something like that, as long as you remember to go back and do it, I guess in the end, it really doesn't matter, but that's kind of the whole point. Yep. I get it. But I mean, it's there to be fun. So you can choose not to do it. And you can choose to do a TFTC as as the finder if you want. I don't care one way or another. I'm just putting it out there for people who do want to do it. That's the way I look at it. I imagine just as you have cash owners who will delete your log if you don't right mm-hmm. and the, sign the physical log i i imagine there may be co's of liars caches that will delete your logs if you don't write a, a liars log yeah i i, I did don't have know that. if there are but i can i could see it i i had that conundrum happen a couple of couple of people into this new one and i'm like okay do i do I send them a happy little note saying, hey, 
guess what, guys? You forgot to read the description. You need to you need to give me a story. It's not worth it. If the if they don't want to read the description, and and you know, more, it it's their loss. It really is. Yeah. Because they they can have the fun. They can have the chance to to play with the imagination a little bit. I've had some real doozies. I've had, I had one guy write me, I swear, if you were to print it up, it was probably a three page essay <laughs> on, on how he killed a, you know, the grizzly bear with his loose sleeve notebook type of a thing. And it was really good. It, it kept me enthralled the whole time. That's awesome. But it's like, oh my gosh, this guy has no life. <laughs> oh. I'm there's sorry. A, there's actually a liar's cash near me that I want to go do, but before I get it, I I keep thinking I gotta have a good story, at least a paragraph or something, that's what, you know. That's what so I thought. I keep working at like I want to have this idea in my head because I don't want to sit down at the computer with writer's block, not being able to log something. And I've been kind of play, toying with this I, story idea in my head. I was like, okay, I've got something. I need to find time to go out and get it now that's that's what i actually did when i went for my first liars cash which is the one you spotlight uh at the end uh i went with the idea that okay i know it's a liars cash and because i pre previewed it before i got there so i know it's a liars cash what do i do with it and that's where i read up on it a little bit and discovered that okay I'm supposed to write something that's kind of funny and, you know, out of this world, la, la, la. So I went with a preconceived notion. I couldn't pre-write it because, I mean, you could, I guess, if you want to, but I like to incorporate certain truisms into the story to make, make okay. it more believable. For example, in this particular case, I had my buddy with me, Abrupt Decay 98 um is his geo name so i had to incorporate that into the story somehow and i'm not sure how i was going to do it but i knew i was going to take a star trekky role to the story because that's all i i, I am one of those that have no life i <laughs> like star trek so the the two liars caches i did back to back i started the story at this cache and I ended the story at this cash okay. and it just worked out and it really was fun. So I said, I got to let other people have that fun. And now that I've done that, I got to let people know about this so that they can come with the idea that this is what's expected. Yeah. I was thinking about this, like with my son, cause he's eight and you know, he's writing and everything, but typing on a phone isn't necessarily the same, you know, and I usually help him write his logs when we find okay. something. Sure. And I was thinking, how could I take him along and let him have fun with this and not necessarily have to type out his, because he's creative and he could spit out some giant rambling I was, I story. Was gonna say, he, he's a smart kid. I've met him. I've he met him he could definitely, you know, give him a little time to think and he can, he can spout something off, but then I got to try to type it up on the phone while he's rambling it off and everything. And I, I came up with a solution for this actually from a previous podcast interview when I was talking with Cashing in the Northwest because he mentioned mm -hmm. a lot of times he will record the text-to-speech into like a file yep. and then put yep. that into his logs like I can do that for him and let him create his own story and then put that in his geocaching log yep yeah. Or, or what I used to do before I had this newfangled phone is I actually used to type it out on Word of what my log was going to be. Let Word play with the spellings and the grammar yeah. and all that garbage. <laughs> and then copy and paste. 
and that worked really good. That will probably be what I do because I will probably log it and update it later. Uh huh. Because well, I you know have... you could save the log as a draft. Oh, I could do that. I could save it as a draft. That's yeah. true. I forget that's an option. Actually, that is an option. But I, the problem is, is when you turn that on for this cache, you got to remember that it's still on for that other cache. Yeah. That's oh. that. I keep getting in that trap of like, oh yeah, that's why I'm not seeing it because it never sent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've i've got because i'm weird and i'd like to say i have a life but my life evolves around a tiny human yeah. <laughs> and a bunch of podcasts and, and they're done that <laughs> not the podcast but the tiny humans well a lot of ones are podcasts that i listen to and i really like when i can find ways to incorporate even if nobody else knows it where i can find ways to incorporate elements from storylines of other podcasts or something into other things mm -hmm. that i enjoy nice and i actually did that with one of my adventure labs i made like a little mini almost like little mini fan fiction story based on the world of this one fictional podcast okay and i've got another podcast where they I, you may or may not have heard of it. It's called The Midnight Library. Uh-huh. Actually, I have. Okay. I love that podcast. <laughs> and in a recent episode, Irma, who is definitely not a demon, and you'll get it uh, if you listen to that, right. you know, licks the back of a guest knee, and they blame it on, oh, no, it's a, it's a giant frog that showed up from the pond that thinks it needs to live here. So it's like, oh i heard that and then i started automatically my mind starts going what if you were geocaching and you came upon the geocache and this giant frog or toad was there guarding it oh geez and you had to somehow get the geocache from this giant toad that's like the size of a german shepherd kind of thing now you're sounding like a dungeon master i know right <laughs> how much do i have to roll to get past this giant toe <laughs> that's a good question because the idea is you only have your caching kit you you don't have a sword or any magic uh -huh. to get by it <laughs> I've never actually played D&D, &D, but I, I could probably ask my sister and her husband what you might need to roll to get past this giant toad. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Something's not right with you, Amy. <laughs> There's a, yeah, you know what? It's genetic. Wow. Eat my family and then you get a I did. Of, <laughs> you're you didn't meet uh, no, you're not meet the you meet the uh the bigger part of the family. You meet my dad's side of the family and people go, Oh now we get it. <laughs> True story. True story. I went to my daughter's uh oh, what was it? National Honor Society. She was inducted to it. And most of her teachers have never met me because I've been out of that state for 11 years. So when I go to visit and, and I'm there at the National Honor Society, I'm cracking jokes and I'm, you know, throwing puns and well, you've met me, you know how I am. <laughs> so one of her teachers apparently comes up to her after the fact, this is my daughter telling me, she says, oh yeah, she says, Miss so-and-so came up to me yesterday and said, now I see where you get your sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> and my daughter, not even skipping a beat, she says, guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, it's genetic. We can't help uh, it. It just happens. <laughs> so, very cool. Oh, 
Well, speaking of cash highlights, yes. <laughs> as we find a segue into that. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't random at all. Not at all. So you have a cash highlight for us. Yes. And it is GC eight T Y G G. And that is called DNF Magazine's Best DNF. Yep. Okay, explain D this one to me. Okay, DNF Magazine is a local YouTuber, uh, vlogger, whatever you want to call him. Okay. And he was the one that I actually talked to the, about, about doing a Liar's Cash segment, and he, he never came back with anything. But uh, he created this Liar's Cash out in... A, a suburb of Peoria, Illinois, and we hit it on the way to a unofficial geo tour in Kiwani, Illinois. And like I said, it's it's right there on the cash page. This is a liar's cash. This is how you do it. And and I just had a ball. In fact, if anybody wants to look it up, it was uh, September thirtieth of twenty twenty was my log. So have a good time with that. Sorry, shameless, shameless self-promotion there. But um, <laughs> it was a lot of fun because it was one of those caches where you get in there and me and my buddy are looking around. It, it's in a park, first of all. It's in a park, not not widely used park. Okay. It's one of those parks that are kind of forgotten and they're trying to trying to re-inculcate it and get it going again or whatever. So it's, it's in there and we're looking, well, there's this bear tree there's this mound of dirt there's these really old like landscape timbers i mean there's nothing to look at there there's a there's a shelter but it's like 50 feet from the coordinates so we're like well we'll give it a shot and we step out of the car and it was it's like i said earlier you look down and oh my gosh there it is this can't be right. This is way too easy. <laughs> <laughs> so we pick it up, we do our thing and we put it back where it was. And, and I told my buddy, I said, you, you know, this is a liar's cash, right? He's like, what's that? Okay. He obviously didn't read the description. So <laughs> I'm filling him in and he's like, oh, well, I'll go ahead and log that. I'll update it later. Hey, like you said. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm going to write something, but it's going to take a while. So I'm not even going to draft it. I'm just going to wait until we go for lunch and I'll write it up there. And sure enough, before we even had our meal, I had the whole darn thing typed up, ready to go. <laughs> Granted, it's not the two thumb, you know, micro, you know, machine guy. Just <laughs> I, It took a while because, of course, I got sausage fingers, but. I got it out and it's like, cool, I'm, I'm good. Send. <laughs> <laughs> and as far as I know, my buddy never did put a log in. Oh, I said, I, I met him. I met him like a few weeks after I said, Hey, did you ever put that log in for the liar's cash? He's like, Nope. I'm like, I'm going to? <laughs> nope. I'm like, why? He's like, I just can't think of anything to say. I'm so sad for you. Okay, whatever. Moving on. <laughs> uh, see, I, I have been accused of having an overactive imagination many times in my life. I still get that accusation, as you may have guessed from the whole giant toad conversation are you a Walter not Mitty? long ago. Are, are you a Walter Mitty? <laughs> I, I feel like for somebody like me, this is just, this is that creative outlet. This is something to give you that opportunity to just shine. <laughs> and shine we do, don't we? And shine we do. <laughs> shine so we I, do. So when I left my log on this one, uh, one of my buddy cashers down in Bloomington, he texts me like, I don't know, five minutes after I left the log. He's like, oh, I love your log on that cash. <laughs> I'm like, you read it? He's like, yeah. He's like, I've been watching it ever since it came out. I'm like, oh, well, now I watch it too. Because I just enjoy reading all these fanciful, you know, tales. That is 
the liar's cash is definitely one that it's fun to go back and read previous logs and see what mm-hmm. other people have came up with. Right. That is a fun thing to do. I've I've been doing that of the one that I planned. And I, I really just need to go and get it. It's really not that far from me. Right. I, so I recently hit 299. And I'm thinking wow. I might make that 300. <laughs> what are you waiting on? Oh my gosh. I know. Well, you know, you have to incorporate that it's 300 in your tail. Like you've gotten 300 gemstones for this or some goofy thing like that. Uh huh. I see those wheels turning. <laughs> you see Don't the wheels turning there. in my mind now. <laughs> <laughs> But I found mm-hmm. out through this uh, Project GC that we only really have two uh, liars caches that have liar in the name here in Illinois. Both of them are far from me. So chances of me getting to them, not likely. One's in the Chicago area, and I don't even remember where the other one is. But I hope to do more liars caches as I can find them because I really do have fun with them. I would love for ground speak to come back and kind of do like what they did with challenge caches and make people put that in the name okay so it's easier to find or or better yet make an attribute for it yeah i mean we like can't even the, get an like, attribute for challenge caches or gadget caches i don't foresee <laughs> no but the liars cache would be good because you could have the it would be good like the like the um the old image from the three stooges where it had the happy face sad face you know oh, there and you make go. that the make that the the uh attribute to, uh icon that would be good I, that would be very cool i don't know what it takes to get new attributes there's several if, if anybody's listening from gchq wish. yeah can we please get some new attributes <laughs> A liar's cash one, even though liar's pretty cash, don't like it. <laughs> cemetery cash, gadget cash, challenge cash. <laughs> let's let's get to work on those. Now, how would you document a challenge cash on an icon? You got exactly. like the the Iron Man look, and he's he's got like the wow. arms and the little lines coming out of like the muscles, like uh yeah, it looked like a Funko Popper edition. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can oh, no copywriting that. there. <laughs> Let's see, what would you... Gadget cash would be easy because you just do some gears. Absolutely. Cemetery cash, you just have a little headstone. Or a cross. Or a cross. Well, no, 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 no. No, no, not a cross. Cross would, cross would offend. Yeah, cross is yeah. too religious. Little, little gravestone. Maybe the gravestone yeah. says R.I.P. on it. There you go. R.I.P. with the geocache symbol. There you go. Like one of my tombstones I made for uh, Halloween. I got one too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine says, uh, has initials G.O. and last name Cash. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. See, there we go, Ground Speak. We laid it out for you. Yep. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> crazy sounds about right. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's right up our alley. Yep. <laughs> so, but yeah, as I, I told you earlier, uh, I do have an article on this coming out on the newest FTF, hopefully. So if anybody doesn't get this podcast, they'll still see about liars caches and get to read all about them, or at least a little bit about them. And maybe that'll get them going on the the idea of, hey, that, that kind of sounds fun. Maybe we will see more liars caches. That would be neat. I, I do mm-hmm. find the concept interesting. I like mm-hmm. the creativity. I like the idea of the creativity that you can have that going into it. Not everybody's going to do it, but right. I do like the fun little twist on it. Yeah. In fact, I was telling you about this geo tour out in Kiwani. It actually incorporates a liar's cache in it. 
So oh, that was it? that. That was that second phase of the two because I found the DNF uh, magazines okay. one, and we were going for that Geo Tour, which I didn't know at the time that there was a liar's cache in that. It just worked itself out. That's so cool. It was the small towns, small towns uh, Geo Tour, something like that. So on Project GC, when you looked up the liars' caches, how did you search for that? For anybody that might want to do that themselves, uh, search keyword for liar. Okay, so just Project GC keyword liar. Yep, that That's was simple. it. Simple. And click on the search by keyword, and boop, boop, there it goes, all eighty-one under okay. the geocaching app or website or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to so, go yeah. do that now. See if there's any more in my area. The only reason I know the one is a liar's cache, it's literally called Liar Liar. Uh -huh. So it's very easy to go, oh, I think this is a liar's cache and read the well, description. And yes, it is. And there was four of them that I found when I did that search. I think it was four of them that had the exact same name, <laughs> but were in four different states, Texas, Indiana, yada, yada, yada. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I do so, like that you can have multiple caches of the same name because heaven yes. knows that would be very difficult very fast if you had to have a cache of a different name from all the others out there in the world. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming on today and, and talking about liars caches with me. As always, it's been a blast. As always, we do. made little tangents, <laughs> but we got back on track. Well, we managed to keep back on it. <laughs> we always manage to circle back around. <laughs> That's right. Thank you for listening to Geocache Adventures. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If there's a topic you'd like to hear about or an adventure you'd like to share, please contact me at geocache.adventures.podcast at gmail.com or just head over to geocacheadventures.org and head to the contact page and you can reach out from there. I'd love to hear from you. Have you heard of FTF Magazine? It's the magazine for geocachers. It is full of articles and pictures all submitted by geocachers just like you. I'm a subscriber myself and I love it. My favorite part is the little snippets on the edges of the articles on all the different pages. Those are my favorites. Just go to ftfgeo.com to check them out and tell them Shadow Dragon 1 sent you.